We had a great session today with um, myself, Michael Christensen, and Ellen O'Sullivan on the global perspective of airway management. I personally gave a lecture on airway management around the world, followed by Michael Christensen giving a lecture on um, limited resources with airway management in different countries, and then it followed by Ellen with um, educational issues at hand. I, I personally, my lecture was on global airway management around the world, and what I did is try to do figure out where we are doing, what, what's happening in different areas of the countries. So I sent out a survey to uh, various members of the Society of Airway Management who are international members, and I kind of put together, compiled all the data that, of my responses, and it was very interesting what we found. But there's a lot of issues that the United States shares that, as well as around the world. So it's not as different as I thought it was going to be, to be honest. Um, we share similar issues with limited resources and uh, difficult airways. They're here to stay. They're not going to go away. And I really question with all the different algorithms that are at hand and they're constantly evolving and I know the USA algorithm is about to go under revision as well and DOS's algorithm is about to go under revision. The Canadian algorithm is about to go undergo revision. So I think there's certain themes or concepts that are so similar in all the algorithms. Even though there's maybe some minor differences, there are a lot of shared issues at hand that are so similar that I wonder if we could come up with a universal type difficult airway algorithm that would be good for everyone. A very simple algorithm that would take into account key decision making points and maybe just certain basic airway techniques that we know everybody would have so that we could create some type of a universal simplified airway algorithm. So we talk things like this. Um, also, some way in which we can confirm uh, proper placement of a tracheal tube, whether it be by capnography or other type of end tidal carbon dioxide uh, detection device, uh, or just some other way to really confirm that you are indeed in the trachea when you're placing an airway. So that seems to have come up. Uh, the national audit uh, really came about with all the lectures for the European, it was the NAP4 study that recently came out and was published. That seemed to be discussed between all the different speakers and the significant findings of that, uh, where we've made mistakes and what we could improve upon. And uh, there's certainly a lot of education that we need to perform. Um, around the world. Uh, it's not um, just with our trainees, but there's people who, anesthetists who finished and they're out in private practice now or just practicing even in academic centers, they need to learn the new techniques and, um, you know, competency issues arise too. You know, do we need to be, how can we be judged to be competent in certain airway techniques? And, how many procedures does it take to become competent in a certain technique? But that has to be studied. And going forward, uh, you know, how do we test for this? Should people be tested for this before they can practice or to stay competent to during their practice? So a lot of these type of issues were addressed with the session, and I just found it to be very informative, very interesting. And Enjoy the session.